Welcome back to the FlipNerd.com REI Classroom, where experts from across the real estate investing industry teach you quick lessons to take your business to the next level. And now, let's meet today's expert host. Hey guys, Brian Mayer here from the Investor Entourage, here as today's host for the REI Classroom. And the topic we're going to talk about today are the four potential exit strategies when dealing with a short sale. This show is sponsored by PassiveRental.com. Okay, guys. So people say all the time, well, Brian, you know, you teach this flip-free method that you, you know, created, which is basically the wholesaling of a short sale and the stepping aside of a deal if it doesn't make sense to actually buy it. But is that all you do? And I would tell you absolutely no. As a matter of fact, guys, I would tell you that's the worst case scenario. You know, the funny thing with it is with a short sale, it, unlike any other deal that you're getting involved in, you know, when you are marketing for real estate, you're going to be an investor. You are an investor. You're trying to put properties under contract. Let's say to wholesale them. Let's say you're going to do a fix and flip or you want to buy it to do a buy and hold, right? You want to put a tenant in there and have an ongoing rental property in your portfolio. When you sign the contracts with the seller and you guys come to terms, you know the terms. You know how much the seller is going to sell for, the buyer is going to buy for, and it's, let's go to closing, right? Short sales are different. You have to enter into the negotiations knowing that it's exactly that, guys. It's a negotiation. So you go under contract with the owner of record, and they agree, you agree, you put your paperwork together, and now it goes off to the bank or banks. And this is where it becomes interesting. You know, people say all the time, well, what are you going to do with this property? What do you think we should do with that property? I don't know. And furthermore, neither do you. Because until you know what the acquisition price is, the price that you're actually able to buy the property for, how can you possibly determine your exit strategy? As an investor, you can't. Everything comes down to mathematics, and in order to calculate your ROI and your potential income on, on a property, you have to have all the figures. And unfortunately, guys, with a short sale, it doesn't come until the very end. It doesn't come until after the BPO or, or the appraisal, right? The, the bank does what they call their valuation. Then you enter into a counter phase where it's basically they counter your offer, and guess what? They always do. Then you counter back to them, and you come to terms, and now finally you have a verbal approval. And then they're going to issue you an approval letter. And now once you have that piece of paper in your hand and you know, technically even at the verbal approval, but funny things could happen. So it's really not set in stone until you have that piece of paper called the approval letter. You're not going to know what you can buy the property for. And then and only then can you determine what you're going to do with the property. So what can you do with it? Well, there's four possible things you can do, okay? Number one, you can renovate the property. You can improve it. You can actually buy it. Use hard money. Use private money. Whatever you need to do, you purchase that property. You put some money into it. You renovate it. doesn't matter if what, it's what we call lipstick on a pig, right? Just paint, carpet, clean it up. Or if you're going to go in and actually rehab it, you're going to put in a new kitchen. You're going to redo the bathrooms. You're going to put on a new roof, whatever the case may be. You're going to do a fix and flip. You're going to go in, clean it up, relist it, get it out to your buyer's list, and sell it. Second option would be to buy and hold. You know what? You're going to get this property at such a good price. You're going to clean it up a little bit, and you're going to put a tenant in there. And now you're going to have a monthly cash flow for you. You may want to build up a whole portfolio of rentals. A lot of guys do that. It's an option. Option number three, create a note. Become the bank. Actually hold the paper. You can now sell that house with seller financing and you become the bank. So if you've ever wanted to get involved in notes, this is an excellent way to do it because all you're doing is controlling the property. You can now sell it to another investor who wants to be that landlord who can then put the tenant in there and you hold the paper. Excellent strategy. Works all the time. Fourth and finally would be get out of the deal, right? You, you came to the end of the deal and you realize, well, we're going to buy it for this and it just doesn't quite make sense for me to really put the money into it or buy and hold or what have you or, or create a note. So we're just going to exit the deal, but we're not going to exit it without getting paid. We're going to do a called a release and termination of contract. We're going to collect some money for stepping aside from the end buyer who generally is going to be a retail buyer at that point, which is fine. We put it back on the MLS, we attract the buyer and away we go. So guys, why do you, you know, people say all the time, well, Brian, short sales aren't really as prevalent as they used to be. And back a few years ago, they were everywhere. Yeah, I get it. I know. I still do them every day. But there's still plenty around that once you understand that once you control the property and you have four different specific exit strategies to deploy, it becomes a very powerful way to acquire properties, guys, because you could literally do anything you want with it. That's why they've always worked. That's why I still work them and why I always will. So I hope that helps. Get out there and find them and know that you have different options for when you're actually ready to close the deal and make some money. So until the next time, we'll talk to you soon. PassiveRental.com is your source for turnkey, done-for-you rental properties. If you'd like to be an investor and not a landlord, 
please visit PassiveRental.com to learn how to purchase cash-flowing, professionally managed rental properties in the hottest rental markets across the country. We can also help connect you with financing for your next property. Invest the easy way today and get started by visiting PassiveRental.com. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of FlipNerd.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Are you a member yet of FlipNerd.com, the hottest real estate investing social community online? If not, you can join for free in less than 30 seconds and get access to hundreds of off-market deals, vendors in your market to help you in your business. And you can start networking with thousands of other investors just like you. Get your free account now at FlipNerd.com. Please check out the FlipNerd family of real estate investing shows where you can access hundreds of expert interviews, quick tips, and lessons from leaders across the real estate investing industry. They're available at FlipNerd.com shows or simply search for FlipNerd in the iTunes store.